Hey everybody, the I cannot believe this is happening feeling has passed. The ridiculous high of holy shit it actually happened has gone and now we're back to normal. I'm feeling better now. I've gotten all my screens out. I've gotten all my shit out. I'm feeling good. Feeling all right. And like I said before, I promise we do a 500k Q&A. We got plenty of questions to go through. I'm very excited before I start that. I want to say you've been asking for it for a while and I have provided it to you. We now have a Bricky Discord. The Brick House Discord is now fully functional and ready for you to join and be a part of. Now, of course, this Discord you can find in the description of this video featuring such awesome things as multiple special rooms depending on what game you want to play. You want to play some League Warframe Rainbow Six Siege, some Dead by Daylight, maybe a little bit of For Honor, doesn't really matter what you want to play. You can choose what you'd like. You want to have a nice little general chat totally fine made announcements for twitch streams and youtube videos so you never miss anything from this little stream tech talk you got some issues with your stuff let's discuss some tech maybe some of the guys can help you out fix some of your tech issues and most importantly the not suitable for work section featuring 3d nsfw 2d nsfw tasteful nudes and of course edgy memes there's a place for everyone there's a thing for everyone go ahead and come on and join we're gonna have a good time all right it's gonna be very very fun so have jump on him and now let's start the q a our first question comes to us from frothy omen and says will you be my dad yeah why not frothy let's do it next question will you share your oats no third question how do you keep in shape even though you record stream almost every day well that's a two-parter first part don't forget i'm 22 my metabolism hasn't gone away yet i still have some young people metabolism all right and secondly you people kind of forget that diet is massive amount of of weight loss and stuff exercise is of course great and important but diet is is king so, so long as you don't eat horribly and like shit for a while, you can go pretty far. Are there any hidden passives to being a Bricky subscriber? You could save 10% on Loot Crate. Then again, that's not really hidden. That's very obvious, but you know. Why did Becky bring me a turkey and Swiss? I asked for ham and cheese. Because she's a dumb bitch. What do you think of that documentary Matt did on you? You know, if I'm being honest, the first thing I thought about when he suggested that we do the life of a streamer on me, I was just surprised he wanted to do it serious. That was the one thing that surprised me the most. Like, of all the people to make it serious on, it chose me. It's kind of funny, but I mean, the documentary is, is fucking incredible. Like, it's absolutely incredible. And you know it's incredible. If you've seen it, the, the filmmaking skill that he has is through the goddamn roof. So it's it's wonderful. What did you spend your first YouTube paycheck on since it was never answered over on Necrit's channel? Well, my first YouTube paycheck was like, I think $18, give or take, I, maybe even less than that, but I didn't get that money yet because YouTube only pays out after $100. So if I recall correctly, I think after the first $100 I got on YouTube, I spent it on Arizona iced tea. I think a, I think a college textbook. Fuck. Question from Slovakia. Aren't your parents bothered when sometimes you do, let's say, explicit videos like swearing, talking about hentai, etc.? My mom is very strict when it comes to these things, so that's why I ask. Love her, though. Uh, my parents, obviously, they don't really... I mean, they know what it is. They know what those things are. Things like fucking hentai and shit like that. They know what it is. They... they understand the concept but they don't really care too much because you know obviously i swear and i talk about weird things stuff but we're a very nice open family we make stupid jokes like that all the time so it's really not like a scary taboo thing or anything they're totally cool with it it's just you know that they just don't really care they're like that it's talking about his shit again holden cross versus daubany is it a trial or an execution yeah, that's the execution. What would you say to people who are aspiring to become streamers? What would you say should be the goal? Uh, I always say the same thing when it comes to streams. Treat five people like 500. I mean, a lot of pe people, especially streamers, when chat gets slow, they kind of become discouraged and don't talk as much. You can't do that, man. You can't do it. Treat five like 500. That is, in my opinion, the best way to run a stream, you know? You have an audience, whether it's five people, 500, 5,000, 15,000. 50,000, like very few people can get, treat them the same. Your favorite song, well, I mean, favorite songs change on a yearly basis and stuff, but if I had to choose my favorite song right now, I call me casual, call me as casual as you want to ca call me, but Sympathy for the Devil from Rolling Stones will always have a place in my heart. If not that, I really like Arsonist Lullaby by Hozier and a couple other of Hozier songs, but those are both really, really good. Uh, House of the Rising Sun by Animals too. Mm. Love it. Hey, Bricky, first one, congratulate you on your hard work. Thank you. You deserve this even more. 
Thank you. What is your favorite Rainbow Six Siege character? Mine is Fuse. This is why I don't play hostage. Uh, my favorite has to be probably, I'd say, Zofia. I'd say Zofia, probably. I like Zofia a lot because uh, I'm not very good at the game, so I kind of need the one-man army style. And I don't want to be selfish and play, like, Blackbeard because Blackbeard is only for you. Zofia still has some teammate-based stuff, you know? You can blow through stuff and stun people, but you're still, like, one-man army, you know? And I really like her gun, so she's a lot of fun. Besides her, I definitely go with Mira, Legion, and... Uh, I actually really enjoy Thermite as of lately. Just, I just love placing his charge. It's like a big fucking hole coming right up. It, it's just so cool, man. It's it's so great to literally blow a hole in their defense. All of those those things you put up, all of those unbreakable barriers and shit, all the reinforcements just gone. He's made a big fucking hole. I love it. Oh God. So that anime guy that plays LOL says, so dot, 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 hmm, dot, dot, dot. You say you don't like anime, right? Why? Love you so much, Bricky, and congrats on 500K. Yeah, I know everyone has opinions, but still anime is awesome. Oh, but call me Professor Bun Bun. Friend, end, 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 only anime has no end. <sighs> And you're asking me why I don't like anime. If I'm if I'm answering your question perfectly honestly, though, I simply don't enjoy like 90% of anime tropes. I find them very annoying. I find a lot of the major like anime-ish things to be very annoying. And the fan base has definitely heard it a lot. Uh, the amount of very broken, poorly spoken Japanese I hear from people who don't speak Japanese from anime is also very annoying. And that is just kind of makes me <sighs> anime in its own right is not a bad thing i've watched a couple you know i thought death note and black lagoon were decently good but that's because they're not like normal animes the tropes aren't there it's anime tropes that get me you know it's that kind of stuff that gets me that i just i really don't like it i'm sure there are plenty of like non-trope anime that i'll probably enjoy people keep recommending me cowboy bebop and stuff beep beep bop boop boop beep Beep boop bop. No man, you're thinking of beep boop boop bop boop boop bop. But at the same time, I know this is a bad mindset to have, but it, I keep getting barraged over and over again. Like, why don't you try this anime? Why don't you try that anime? That at the end of the day, I'm just kind of like, fuck this man. I'm gonna go watch Stranger Things. I'm not even gonna try. Sure, it's a bad mindset to have, but I mean, still, even though I did kind of enjoy those two, I'd still watch like Breaking Bad and House of Cards and Stranger Things over those any day of the week. The tropes bug me. Almost all the tropes bug me. The anime itself, you know, it's fine. Why do you always style your hair in a way that will attract attention to your forehead? I mean, you gotta become part of the meme, man. You gotta, you gotta be one with the meme. I tattoo loot crate to my forehead if it didn't cause me job opportunity failures in the, you know, later stages of my life. Why did you name yourself Bricky? Well, that's a two-part question. Part one is that it was originally a Microsoft generated Xbox username that my buddy thought was kind of funny. We all used Bricky Orchid 8. Microsoft just gave us that name. We're like, that's stupid. Let's use it. And when I decided to make a YouTube channel, my buddy's like, hey, you should call Bricky Orchid 8. I'm like, that's kind of funny. I'll do that. And well, shit, here we are. If you're referring to why I changed my name to just Bricky, same reason, kind of. I think Bricky Orchid 8 in its own right is kind of a silly name. It doesn't sound very professional. It's kind of cringy when I say it. You know, when people ask me, what's your channel name? And I say, Bricky Orchid 8. Like, what the fuck is that? Um, also, it's better for, like, search results and shit like that. And I, I think Bricky's just kind of nicer. I mean, you all called me Bricky anyway, so it kind of works out. What inspires you to keep doing what you do? You work really hard for us. Oh, thank you. But there's something else that keeps you going. I'm just going to answer this question as honestly as I can. Some of you may not like the answer, but I'm just going to be straight up with you all. Success, envy, and the power comes with. Now that sounds like the biggest megalomaniac thing you could possibly think of, but hear me out. Success is of course a big one. Nothing is more inspiring than watching subscriber numbers grow, than watching view counts grow, than watching, you know, Twitter followers, Instagram followers, everything thing just grow. And then, you know, of course, on the financial side of things, it just gets you so inspired and excited. The second part is envy. It's more of like an envy and revenge kind of thing. It sounds a little weird when you say it that way, but the envy has two parts. The first part is like the, oh, yo, fuck that guy. I can do what he does, but better, you know, kind of thing. And that's kind of a toxic mindset to sometimes have. But when you see some of the people at the way top of YouTube, uh, you know, sir, you know who I'm talking about when it comes to people, controversy and all that shit. When you see them on the top, 
in my mind, I kind of get that feeling of like, I can be where you are, but I can do it without being an asshole. So it gives you a little bit of inspiration to get there. The second part of envy is seeing the people on the top and seeing how wonderful people they are and looking at them as a role model. Uh, people like like Markiplier, like Jacksepticeye, these kinds of people are the people that just seem like such good people that I want to I want to like try to get where they are. I want to be inspired to get to what they're doing. They seem like very wholesome individuals. And the final part is the whole revenge part, which sounds a little bit weird, but it's a lot of you know you'll never make it, you'll never get far enough, your channel's gonna die, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's just making that giant galactic size middle finger to all those people as I. I slowly make my way up. Nothing is is more inspiring than shitting on all the people who told you you can't. And finally, the third part is the whole power thing. Uh, that's That may not be as crazy as it might sound, but simply put, I want the ability to have a lot of influence to where I can do some good things. You know, someone with a thousand subscribers will not be able to make a charity stream as like profitable or you know as raise as much money as someone with 10,000 someone with 100,000 someone with a million you know the bigger you are the more good you can do I want to be able to play a video game and then tweet the words this video game is great go buy it and actually see sales figures change that's a good feel that's a great feel you know I want to say this game is wonderful, you should buy it. And literally, go to Steam Charts and see a player count increase. That's not easy to do, and very few people can do that, but I really want to, because there are some people in some games that really deserve it. So that's another part of it. Those are the three things that really get me going, you know? Those are the three things that really push me up. Success in my own right, a combination of envy and, and the revenge kind of thing, which is a very toxic mindset, but hey, you know, I, I'm just going to be truthful about it. And the final part of, of having the ability to influence and do, like, good things like that. That's that's the stuff that kind of is exciting. Long answer, I'm sorry for that, but yeah. Are there bigger things that you want to achieve for the channel, like some big projects in the future, or like the DBD charity stream, what are they? And if you want, can you tell us? Yeah. Yes, more vlogs. Absolutely more vlogs. I want to make the Monday vlog not a Monday sitting down vlog like this. I want it to be like a vlog of what I did throughout the week. The only problem is vlogs take a lot of time. I get nervous in public doing this. It feels weird. And it's a lot of editing and, and work a lot of times. So I want to, but that might be in the future. There's the podcast. I want to get that done this month in March, uh, possibly. I'm hoping we got to cross your fingers on that one. And finally, uh, other big stuff. I'd like to do a couple more series and such, but I want, to, I want better made content. I, there are a lot of people who are just simply better editors than I am. I am not a good editor and either I need more time or I need more skill. I'm going to try the skill part first. I'm going to try and see if I can really learn After Effects and learn Adobe Premiere and really, really get into some good quality editing and stuff. And if I can't, then I'll figure something out. I want, I want better YouTube videos, definitely. My question is, what is your relationship with your fan base? Do you feel it's always good or sometimes bad times? I mean, most of the time it's pretty good. Most of the time we're just a giant echo chamber of memes and shit, you know? But I find the most interesting uh, discussions I have with my fan base either on Twitch or in my Fireside Brickia episodes. Those seem to have the most interesting comment sections, the most interesting people. And it's very, very fun to have a conversation and go back and forth with them. I mean, I think we're both on the same wavelength pretty much, myself and the fan base, but there are things we disagree on. And it's good to have a conversation about it rather than ignoring them. Fuck me. I see an anime profile picture. Be gone. Estimate how many people have become Tom Kench mains because of you. I would be curious. Honestly, I'd assume there'd be more Kled mains because of me, if I if I gotta be honest. I feel like the amount of fun I have playing Kled highly outweighs the amount of fun I have playing Tom Kench, but that's just me. Favorite Space Marine chapter. I mean, I mainly own Grey Knights, but they're part of the Ordo Malleus, so they're not really a Space Marine chapter. So if you actually meant like original vanilla Space Marine chapters, the Salamanders are the Iron Fists. Your video with Magic Carp, it really outlines how hard you work, how much of your time you put in. Do you ever wake up and just need a day to take a breath? Do you give yourself a vacation days? Um, I, I mentioned before that I kind of have a toxic mindset on this kind of stuff, but this is also one of those things. Uh, I don't, I don't really. I have a mental thing that if I am doing something for myself and not for work, I am failing. And so that affects me a lot. Um, if I am resting or stuck in traffic, 
or if I am relaxing or anything like that, my, the thoughts that go in my mind are you could be writing a script, you could be recording this episode, you could be streaming right now. And that is not a good thing to have, it is far from a good thing to have. I would highly suggest that those of you who get into this do not have that same mental thought. But that's what I think about and I stick with it. So, no, not really. Why are you such a bitch? Well, I mean, that, that's, I mean, I feel like that's just your opinion, man. I've been watching your videos since freshman year of high school, and now I'm a senior, almost graduating. Your videos helped me along the way, especially the Origins Fireside video. I only have one question. What is your favorite zombies map? Or Origins. Yeah, Origins is my favorite zombie map. Uh, if not Origins, Mob of the Dead, uh, Gerard Crovey. I know it's not how you say it, but I don't know how to say it. Uh, I just like that one because it's fucking dragons, man. It's just like they, they, one game just gave so few shits. It was so funny. And uh, probably Doris, they're, they're, Doris, they're the, the giant. Yeah, that one, just classic. Kino Der Toten's good too, but my only issue is the fucking crawler dudes. I hate those things. What about League have you grown this like over the years? Well, it's not actually over the years. It's more of as of recently. I think League has, ha has gotten better for quite some period of time. But at the current moment, it's not as good of a casual game as it used to be. Back in the day, here's the thing. You can describe League in one specific statement. One teammate cannot win you the game. One teammate can lose you the game. That's my big issue with League at the current moment. As much as you assume that a 9-1 Riven can carry the game, she really can't anymore. She used to, but she really can't anymore. But that 0-7 Lucian in the bot lane, he will lose you the game. Absolutely. And it feels like for 40 minutes plus, the amount of time that I'm spending playing the game just doesn't feel like a much of a payoff. It feels too stressful, you know? Wins feel stressful and random and losses feel crushing. So it's just not as fun for just the me anymore, for a solo player. Playing with friends is still mostly fine, but for just the me, it's losing a little bit of its enjoyment. It could just be the meta, it could change in the future, but we'll see. Do you think sometimes that the Twitch chat and YouTube comments get out of hand with their memory and doesn't harm you as a content creator? Fuck no. Well, I mean, fuck yeah. A little bit of both. Yes, they get out of hand, but I don't care, so it's cool with me. What's the next major ship post video? I'm talking to Matt about that one. There was a certain thing he filmed when we were doing the life of a streamer, and I need that. Hey, Brocky, what's your favorite hard liquor to drink, pure or on some rocks? Uh, I'm a, like I said a million times, I'm a rum guy. I like rum in every sense. I like sipping rums a lot. Diplomatico is a wonderful one, as well as Zaya is pretty tasty, though I would probably mix Zaya more so. Besides those, I really do enjoy Hennessy's XO. It's extremely expensive, but if you can get some, get some on occasion, drink a little bit on occasion, it's good shit. Do you know how I could save 10% on Loot Crate? Anyway, thank you all so much for being part of today's Q&A. If there's a question that you wanted to ask that I didn't mention or something that I may have missed, you can always go to twitch.tv slash bricky. There's always plenty of ways to get my attention on stream, even though chat does go by quick, pretty quickly, and I can answer your questions there. So I, obviously I stream plenty, so that's pretty fun. With that being said, I know I don't have the mindsets a, a lot of other YouTubers might have, but I, I like to keep a little bit more of a tangible mindset when it comes to it. You know, I know that I work in probably way too much that's probably entirely healthy. I understand that. But the success that I gain from it and the reasons why I stick around are important to me. While they may seem a little bit weird for other people, like I mentioned before, the jealousy, envy, power, all that kind of shit, even though using those specific words make it sound worse than it actually is, still, I like what I do. I appreciate that. And the amount of work I spend into it is something that I take a lot of pride in. My YouTube channel would not be here if it wasn't for the insane amount of work that I put in. And my YouTube channel would not be here if it wasn't for the insane amount, uh, insane amount of support that you give. We are a give and take, you know, myself and my fan base. I, I appreciate that. I'm not, I'm not going to say that, you know, the only reason I'm here is because of all of you guys and all of what you've done. I also know the only reason I'm here is because I actually put the effort into making the content. And I, and I want to take pride in that. It's something I preach a lot. This is not, I don't have time to say this whole thing in this video, but something I preach a lot is individualism, you know? Take responsibility for your actions in both senses, you know? If something absolutely fails and crumbles and my YouTube channel dies, there's only one person at fault, and that's this guy. I need to accept that that's my fault. But if my YouTube channel blows up to a ridiculous degree, I'm gonna give myself a lot of props for that. It's a give and take. 
It's a give and take, you know? You got to be able to, to accept responsibility for both the good and the bad. Have confidence in the good things that happen in your life and don't chalk it up to coincidence and have, and you know, take the lessons learned from the shit things that happen in your life and accept your mistakes and failures and learn from those. I, I could probably talk a lot more about this some other time, but for now, I'm just going to enjoy the fact that we had half a million because that's a fucking insane number and move on from there and keep working because that's the thing I'm the best at. All right. Thank you for sticking around. It's always wonderful having you here. And I will see you in the next few videos. Bye-bye.